So this is the this is a pretty silly one. So I'm playing uh against I'm playing with more of that mid rage Aridin, and I'm playing up against a spell Tal deck. So he passes immediately, so he's going first, and he doesn't want to play against a mid range slash control Aridin going uh. He doesn't want to play against an Aerodin that's going second because it, that it gives me so much more power to play reactively and to play low tempo options without actually being punished. Whereas he will be punished every step of the way uh, from my my options and his lack thereof. So, of course, what do I do when someone passes like that on me? I pass too. Now, the number one reason why I did that is actually not because it was strategically sound. I did it because I knew it would be... Uh, it would be kind of fun, and also I'd get to push the limits of this deck to see just how far, just how well it does against uh, a, an opposing deck that does really well in round three. I, it was kind of more or less fun, but um, as far as, you know, advising that situation, I probably wouldn't advise doing that. I probably just could have played, you know, just something like the Wild Hunt Warrior or something like that. Played that down, got, uh, got in control of round two, and then played out round two enough to bleed him out. Get rid of his, like, get him to play two of his, far, two of his Farseers, and then go into round three with him only having one Farseer, and then the other units, and I could just kind of, you know, snowball from there. But instead, I went for the bit of a risky play, and I went for going into round three. And, like, worse still, I, uh, my draws could have been really bad. But it, thankfully it wasn't. But worse still, I'm going first. So that means I lose my se going second advantage, which uh, isn't as good in like a round three situation. But I, st I still like am in the situation in which my wild hunt hounds are going to be less effective because I had to just pick a row at random. Against certain decks, this is OK, like against uh, like a consume monster decks, because, you know, they have to play a necker on the melee row and other consume type cards like Katakan, but against something like spell Tal where they have a lot of age all units this can be much more difficult and like to follow that up he plays out i uh, don't remember her name but he plays that two that two cost spell card or two strength rather cost card which really doesn't leave me a lot of options i go ahead and play out the second wild hunt hound i am more i'm trying to somewhat bait out a weather clear which actually is probably not even a good idea. Like, my options were so limited here, right? Like, what am I supposed to do against an opponent that plays nothing? And I have two Wild Hunt Hounds that need to be played. And, like, most other cards are reactive, right? I, I can't really do anything. That's kind of why this this becomes, like, it's straddling the line between mid-range control. Because most of my options in my hand are reactive-based, right? I don't have very many proactive plays. Whereas Spell Tau, of course, does with just playing Farseer. Like, the number one proactive play you can possibly do in that deck. So I follow up. Uh, I do lose some of the damage by pulling it because it has that Quinn sign, but it's okay. He plays out a second one. He's really trying to get his combo going. I have... I can't actually play a second one. Never mind. Uh, I really... I feel like this deck should have Monster's Nest. Should it have Monster's Nest? Maybe not. I really want another uh, Drowner. I think this deck only runs two Drowners, but I think I want three. Maybe I'm wrong, though. So I play out my third weather, which is admittedly probably a mistake because if he did actually play a weather clear here, it would have been pretty punishing, but he doesn't actually do that. It's very possible he doesn't actually have any uh, any first lights in his hand, which would be pretty lucky. Uh, conversely, he has the, uh, the one, I don't remember off the top of my head, but it's the one strength unit that pulls a special card from your deck, but maybe he, he doesn't want to play those just yet. Maybe he wanted to get all three of his units down and then start playing out those cards. But either way, I think I did I did play a bit of a mistake here by pulling out all three of these. By pulling out all three of these weathers, rather. So I'm hoping to try and kill one of these Farseers. I'll go ahead and speed this up a bit, because this is pretty uh pretty powerful, of course. So this is a new card that I I am really not sure how I feel about this card. I feel like it's I don't know. I feel like it's kind of I don't want to say overpowered, but it seems like overly disruptive in a way that doesn't allow for enough counterplay for what it does. So what it does is it's a, if you remember the Mahakam Ale event, I think it's like the Poisoned Ale or something like that, the Foul Ale. And basically what it does in this context is that after three turns, it's going to, if you don't do anything, after three turns, it's going to discard itself from your hand and then it's going to discard a random card out of your hand. Uh, conversely, if you play it, it's going to let your opponent draw a card. 
Now, like first silver card, that seems I don't know. That seems a little bit too strong for me to me. Especially when you like you don't really have like the the person playing has no adverse effects. There's no downside. Whereas you had to commit something to be able to get rid of this or else they draw a card or you're going to lose a card. So it's like a, a gaunter. But instead of uh, like a more RNG based luck that kind of gives a, a downside to the person playing it and maybe an upside to the person playing against it. This card has no downside for the person playing it and only upside for them, but only downside for the other person. And gaunter is like a gold card. and This is a silver. I don't know. This card seems a little bit too much. But we'll see how that goes. Maybe it's just because I'm like the particular decks that I'm playing. Like each card is vital to my success. And it's like I just give him a free, I give him a free card advantage. Okay, so let's think about this, right? So he, he's basically this is like he just he he's playing a, a spy with no downside. That's what it, that's I think that's kind of where it breaks down for me because he played his silver card and then he got a card back. Now, granted, this is a little bit, this is actually kind of okay for me. This is less, it's less good for him and a little bit more okay for me because I do have two weathers on the board or two hitting weathers on the board. So that one turn, that one turn, that one turn delay is actually equivalent to like four points, but still he's playing, he's playing a spy for nothing, right? It's crazy. Maybe if like it had a, like a particular downside where like, I don't know. Like maybe you played it and it gives you strength or you played on your opponent's side and it's like and it takes away strength or or like maybe something extreme. Like if you're able to discard it somehow, then you would get something. I don't know. It just seems like it's too much. I don't like that. I really don't like that card. It seems a little bit too too uh, requires too much resources in exchange for how much it gives. It requires too much of your resources and gives too much to your opponent, I think. But we'll see. I, I'm not actually sure what other people think about that card because I haven't been on the subreddit very much. But I'm, I am I, I kind of want to see that. I want to see what people think of that. All right, so I don't actually need to do anything to this farce here, but it's going to die anyway. So my next plan of action is maybe to try and whittle down uh, either that farce here or to eliminate this farce here from the competition. It doesn't make too much of a difference uh, what happens. Now, why did I play an artifact compression so early? Uh, really, it doesn't matter all that much in the long run. That card, that particular fart tier is going to get artifact compression, whether it's now or later. Now, doing it now allows me to delay my turn a little bit and hide my options a little bit more, uh, as opposed to using the very end, which is something I could have done at the very beginning anyway. So that's kind of like the mindset. Uh, I don't feel like there's any particular reason why I wouldn't or why I should wait. Because that's going to be the most powerful card he's going to play all game, right? There's not going to be a single card that he plays that's going to be better than that. So I've, I feel pretty confident in general, at least until I, I until I inevitably get punished. I'm just going to keep doing that, like using artifact compression on a particularly high value target. Uh, and at and the very least, uh, in doing so, delaying my actual turn. So he's playing on Nature's Gift. He does, does Summoning Circle. Thankfully, it's not a Farseer. Uh, if he was able to do a Farseer earlier, that might have actually won the game because it's more units. And it, keep in mind, he actually d hasn't used a Weather Clear, which is kind of surprising. I'm thinking it's because I think there's like a next level of mind game going on here that I didn't actually think about. So maybe he's thinking like, oh, there's no way he would play out th all three Weathers unless he has another Weather. Uh, thinking like that I was smart and I wouldn't make a mistake, which is good. That's how you should always treat your opponents because then there are less surprises uh, and less punishes in general. But in this particular instance, I was actually I made a mistake. I don't actually have any more weathers weathers than that because he was thinking right. Uh, he's going to clear this weather and then oh he's going to play another two weathers right. But that did not that doesn't actually happen. I think the big reason why he probably did that is because round one because we went from round one straight to round three and he's thinking oh he's just trying to get rid of his weathers and then he's gonna, just going to have way more. So it doesn't even matter if I use my weather clear. I'm just going to take the damage now and then save my my first light my uh, my clears. Uh, for pulling out my, uh, you know, 15 strength uh, units or whatever, instead of, you know, clearing this weather, which is only taking two turn. So it kind of makes sense. It's kind of, I wish I had more drowners. <laughs> I really wish I had more drowners. 
Yeah. I think if I had like another drowner, I'd be able to take four a turn, which is much more dangerous. And then like like Ard, like Ard is so I don't like Ard, man. Like it Ard is a really good card when you're trying to line up units on a, on a particular row from like melee. But since most units are agile or I otherwise don't really particularly need units to be pushed to a particular lane, um it just it feels like I don't feel like Ard has a place in this deck. I feel like there's better options for for uh, for this deck than Ard. Like Ard is the perfect card for like like Axemen or uh, like movement Skoa Tau or something like that. But when it comes to just its like its bare minimum effect, I don't think it's good enough. So that's something to look into later. I guess the same could more or less be said about Caretaker. But Care- Caretaker is a really nice flexible card. So even if it does have a lot of times where it's not very useful, it has lots of times where you it literally wins you the game. Which is why I, I like that. Keep that card in there. That's not to say I teched it in. That's always been in there. But that's why it may be in there when maybe it otherwise wouldn't fit the deck as well. Go for the door gray. I forget what I actually do here. What do I do? I just go for another savage bear. It's not really necessary. I don't. I don't feel like there's any reason for me to use. There's not. There's. There's not going to be much for. Uh, caretaker to take from his graveyard and also as far as door gray goes there's not really much of a reason to use anything but uh to to use anything but savage bear at, le- at the very least savage bear will get you know 10 to 12 strength or something like that or i wish i had that card in my hand that card is in my deck but i just don't have it in my hand i really like i really missed out on a lot of my, uh, my movement options here oh you know what i should have done Wait, did I make a big mistake? Oh, you know what? Maybe I should have used Dora Gray to pull out Ekimara and then consume my Drowner and then use my Sly Lizard to pull one out for my deck. Although it, the the case might have been that I've already played three Drowners or two Drowners, which was the cap on the deck. I don't know. I'll need to look into that later because I keep forgetting that uh, Navigator only works on the Wild Hunt. The Drowner is not a Wild Hunt. So maybe I'm getting confused with that. But Sly Lizard works on anything. So maybe I'm just getting a little bit confused there. Yeah, because I've only played one Drowner, right? And there's none in my graveyard. Which means there has to be at least one more. So yeah, I made a mistake. And then I play it for nothing. Yeah, so that's an opportunity where I should have used uh, Ekimara to consume my Drowner so I put it into the graveyard and then use it from there. Ah, dumb mistake. Assuming that I'm not actually missing something. But otherwise, that's... <sighs> okay so the gameplay from here is to manipulate my hand in such a way that say that puts Aeris out like next and then uses my other three options to kill it just in case he buffs them in some way the whole win condition revolves around getting Aeris off of which Aeris is a crazy card uh, I could have positioned this better actually no that's fine it's gonna get killed immediately by the weather and I, I just get a guaranteed uh, activation off uh, I could also put it on that seed row and then just kill it later with uh, Lacerate or, you know, whatever else. But doing the immediate option is not a bad idea either. So he plays his Lacerate. It's really good. I go for my Wild Hunt Warrior. I just, you know, hit whatever. I'm leaving the option up of uh, keeping the Farseer up at the highest strength because just in case he has like a, a Scorch or or for me to threaten Scorch as well. There it is. So by this point, I'm pretty afraid that he's just going to pull out like three of those for 45 points, which would be just insane. Oh, nice. Uh, I didn't actually think about this, but Savage Bear is actually hitting these shields off of these guys, or at least one of them, which means three more damage coming in. Hit, hit. Artifact compression. Yeah, and I win by <laughs> three points. Wow. I won by the, the exact amount of points that my Savage Bear into Lasseria allowed. That's insane. So yeah, there, that, that game was just crazy. Going straight into round three like that was just mental. Uh, I made some mistakes like with the Sly Lizard in particular. 
But otherwise, uh, like this deck has a really strong round three, especially since he didn't use any of his clears. Or he didn't use any of his first lights for clears, which makes sense because, I mean, think about how much damage he took over the course of the entire round. Uh, maybe 20, like tops. And then you have the threat of more weather coming in. And then he, he took that, like, quote unquote, uh, 20 damage over the course of the entire match. Uh, in return for not having more weather played or having wasted weather played. And he gets to play a guaranteed uh, one of these guys. Interesting. Really cool match. <laughs> I guess. I mean, <laughs> it was crazy. Thanks for watching. <laughs>